And I've got so much stuff here, I actually had to bring a pelly case. <gasps> Blimey. Oh, this is already a headliner, isn't it? Isn't Look, it? here it is. And what I've got it's in a here... a well-used pelly case. Is, it is. At, uh, well, it's always good to have a pelly case in one's armoury, I think, of cases. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Straight out with it. And, and, and in this case, I have um, Canon's latest dual fisheye lens. Because there's a bit of history to this. They're actually, at the time of recording, launched this week, wow. right, which is, uh, which is jolly good. And um, Canon are trying to get into the VR headset content creation market by making it easy and straightforward to create. Uh, sort of high quality, 180 degree, fairly immersive content that you can put into into a headset without having multiple cameras and stuff like that. So yeah. let's have a look. There. Anyway. So they're, they're trying to create a 3D experience. Yes. Right. Through headsets like the Vision Pro and, and, and MetaQuest, MetaQuest 3 Quest. and so on. But mm. they, they actually started their, uh, their mission to do this a few years ago with a full frame um, dual fisheye lens Ooh. for their... Um, full-frame mirrorless cameras, oh, including we... this very much video e EOS uh, uh, R5C. Can we, just, so, can we just describe what this looks like, James? Yes. Well, it looks like, uh, and I'm being serious, like a pig snout. It's like two uh, lenses side by side, which you mm. wouldn't normally expect on what looks like a, like, like a DSLR camera, doesn't it? Yeah, a mirrorless one I was in this case. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and as you look at it, there's two lenses looking at you, which obviously give you that uh, 3D mm. footage, yep. correct? Yes. And uh, this, this was the original one for full frame cameras. It's quite uh, quite this large, been out quite for a heavy, while, this one. quite quite large, quite heavy, quite expensive. Yeah. So this came out about five years ago. Uh, yes. Mm. Right. But this week, as the, as we're recording this, they launched another one for their smaller APS-C oh, sensor so cameras. Like sensor. The, initially for the R7, and uh, this is the smaller one here. Oh, it's much it's more to, neat. To Same thing, isn't it, Susie? Yeah, yeah. so it looks very similar, although lens is tiny bit smaller. T yeah, it's, it's got a smaller aperture. It's f3.5 as opposed right. to f2.8. The lenses are still the same distance apart, which is to sort of mimic eyesight. This is a six centimetre separation. So you're getting a 180 degree kind of view it, it, in it's this. Yes, on the original uh, one, the, the full frame, you get, a, I think the field view is technically 190 degrees, which goes down to 180 degrees. With the new new smaller lens, smaller, you get a slightly smaller field, uh, narrower field view, 140 this, approximately. This reminds me of a, mm. uh, a phrase that I was uh, mercilessly taking the mickey out of for saying, which is when 3D TVs... <laughs> <laughs> were all the rage way back in the day on the gadget show. I remember doing a link to camera saying, 3D is here and it's here to stay. Well, and I was right. Well, yes, I told you. I was just ahead of my time. <laughs> just, just the headset hadn't come out yet instead of the telly. Maybe, maybe. No, you're ve thank there you, you John, for saving me. So the idea is that mm. you would, um, well, the, the bottom line is this. I'm a big user of VR, as you know. We've mm. covered VR, haven't yep, we? We, we have. started with the, with the Vision Pro on this podcast, episode one, which is brilliant. Yep. Um, and obviously they've got what they call spatial video, haven't they? Which is a mm. sort of, um, a, 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 I'd say a less immersive version of what I'm guessing this offers, uh, but you can do it with your iPhone. My guess here is that you can shoot something that would be more of a standard 3D movie experience, yes. but yourself. So you're able to content create, they're giving it to the masses, they're crowdsourcing content for the coming VR explosion. Is that yeah. the idea? Yes, I think that, that, that is the idea. I'm, and and yeah. John, we, you know, we've, we've, on this podcast, and we've talked about Insta360, the X4 that's come out, which obviously mm. films 8K and you don't have to frame anything, you zoom in. So in terms of quality, would you, how would you compare the two? I'd, I'd want to do a direct comparison. But I'm, I'm guessing with a bigger sensor, though, this sh should be better. I recorded that interaction between you two, so we might, I don't know if we can yes. play that back, but if yeah. we can, on, yeah. uh, for those of you watching this podcast, yes. you'll be able to see what the effect is like. Do, do these work in the same way that our eyes work? Um, yes, they do. Essentially, they, um, uh, they take a slightly different perspective on what, what you're seeing and, uh, it, and, and combine it together. Although they record the images separately on on the uh, on the center, though. And th th this one, the new one, has autofocus, but it's only a single step auto autofocus. It's not continuous as yet. And it's interesting because I, it feels like the first faltering steps are being made mm. to crowdsourcing content for yes. you know the, the 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 VR space. Yes. And how big is this market, and how important do you think it was for Canon to kind of take this step? 
Well, I mean, there's been a lot of comments around that it is very much a, a, a niche product, and have, should, should they be putting their development resources somewhere else, perhaps? But on the other hand, the counter to that is that uh, c- certainly Apple are throwing a lot of weight it's, behind it. It's a growing it, market, and, and, isn't it? And, it's, and Canon, I suppose, want to try and own a bit of that um, as if, if it really does take off, like, like Apple are predicting. I mean, Apple are working with them, and I noticed that WWDC, they had that, uh, that camera there quite a lot, in the, and, and they also had the... Uh, prototype one which is coming up which is a, a smaller version of that with two little oh my lenses God, in got here a third one this is only a prototype so it's not a functioning one at the moment but that oh. uh, so this looks very different who, who carries yes. around a canon prototype uh, in their uh, pelly case that's the 7.6 millimeter rfs f4 so just describe just describe mm. that one for well, us so, so this is i mean it's clearly the evolution of this technology series because it's got a standard looking lens screwed into the body of the camera but when you actually look down the barrel of the lens rather than seeing just a, a single circle there are yeah, two you're seeing double there are two yeah you're seeing double spaced i'm guessing at a similar distance in terms of ratio but very neatly designed mm yes yeah. Uh, you know, on first kind of glance, yeah. isn't it? It's in, it's very, very interesting. Th- 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 they must know something that we don't. Because this looks, to be honest, the other two, the precursor to the prototype you've got here, they do look a little bit bulky. They look yes. industrial, mm. don't they? Yes, I suppose. Although, they, they, maybe you'll appreciate still the, the bigger aperture, the greater separation and so on. They like need that. to yeah. have that size, but then then mm. you've got it in there. Yes, you've got, smaller. got it. I, I guess it's good to have two ways of doing it. Yeah, well, three, in fact. Mm. Wow. Well, so, so uh, definitely a, an area to watch, John, for sure. I, 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 I think so. 